Some diseases have allergic disease like asthma. Degenerative disease. With the age, you will be witnessing degeneration in your body part. Neglected tropical disease. Look, public health is an important part of your preparation. Okay, so types of disease, their treatment, issues with respect to tackling of all the diseases. You should know all the things related to disease. Okay, that's why we have discussed uh, that TB. Yes, we discussed TB for entirety. Yes, we have completed that polio virus polio disease okay today we will discuss a rare disease and neglected tropical disease okay so that was in the news on 14th october that issues in the treatment of rare disease and what the government can do okay so rare disease kya hai pehle ye dekhenge iske pehle types of disease kya hai pehle to ye batao in general Bataiye. Diseases. How many types of diseases are there? One is congenital disease. Such diseases are there before birth. Yes or no? Jo by birth defects hote hain. Genetic diseases. Some diseases are acquired diseases, which means after birth. Yes, these diseases started after birth. Yes, moreover, acquired diseases are first communicable diseases. Or we can say, you can make this chart. Bana lo. Communicable diseases or we can say infectious diseases. Some diseases are non-communicable diseases. Or non-infectious diseases. Some diseases are with respect to degeneration of degeneration of body tissues or organs body tissues or organs with the age okay with the age you will acquire such diseases like alzheimer yes or no alzheimer's disease or we can say parkinson's disease yes some diseases are with respect to allergies Yes, like asthma. Yes, so asthma, jo disease hai, wo kaun si hai? Related to allergy. Okay, or kya ho sakta hai? Ek or type of disease hai. One more disease is there, which is deficiency disease. Isko thoda sa. One more disease that is deficiency disease. Deficiency disease like vitamin A. Which one? Night blindness, yes or no? Vitamin A, night blindness. Vitamin B, huh? Berry, berry. Vitamin C, scurvy. Vitamin D, rickets. 
yes or no deficiency of protein washi yorker deficiency of uh, iodine goiter yes so some diseases are, are with respect to deficiency of vitamin minerals okay protein carbohydrate like uh, deficiency of iron which disease anemia some diseases are allergic disease like asthma degenerative disease with the age you will be witnessing degeneration in your body parts organs or tissues so alzheimer's disease parkinson's disease these are degenerative disease non communicable disease like give one or two example of non communicable disease diabetes diabetes basically these non communicable diseases are related to your lifestyle yes uh hypertension cardiovascular disease yes hypertension cardiovascular disease okay communicable disease what is communicable disease or infectious disease from one person to another person yes or vector borne disease to isme vector borne bol sakte ho aap communicable disease is nothing but the vector borne disease and in this vector borne disease like some of the diseases are viral disease such as hiv chicken pox covid flu yes these are viral disease some of the diseases are bacterial disease such as tb cholera yes trichoma etc some of the diseases are parasitic disease that is malaria some of the diseases are uh, fungal disease yes athlete's foot disease so this is the classification of disease now you should prepare that disease part in this manner तो जो भी न्यूज में रहता है उसको अच्छे से पढ़ो और उसको थोड़ा इस चार्ट के फॉर्म में प्रिपेयर करो ओके ठीक है ये मैंने एक बैकग्राउंड बता दिया अब इसको प्रिपेयर करना आपका काम है ठीक है वी विल डिस्कस अवेयर डिजीज ओके बिकॉज दैट वॉज इन द न्यूज सो दिल्ली हाई कोर्ट लास्ट वीक इशू डायरेक्शन एम्ड एट इंप्रूविंग द अवेबिलिटी ऑफ सो कॉल्ड ऑर्फन ड्रग्स okay so there is one disease which is known as rare disease such diseases are also known as orphan disease okay and to treat orphan diseases you need orphan drugs theek hai to treat orphan diseases you need orphan drug so delhi high court last week issued direction aimed at improving the availability of so called orphan drug which are medications used to treat rare disease in 2021 one policy was started that is national policy for rare disease was launched under which financial assistance up to 50 lakh per person will be provided why because the treatment of rare diseases is expensive why because most of most of we can say 80% of the total rare diseases are genetical diseases or congenital matlab wo inherited hoti hai to unka treatment zyada tar ka to bana hi nahi hai okay most of the rare diseases are non curable some of them are curable but their treatment is expensive individual will be having no capacity to treat that particular disease that is why government is providing some assistance that is 50 lakh 
Center of Excellence. COE means Center of Excellence. Includes AIMS in Delhi, PGIMR in Chandigarh, and the Institute of Postgraduate Medical Education and Research at Kolkata. Kahan pe treatment hoga in ka bus? Teeni hospital hai. Look at this situation. Okay, in India, there is only three center of excellence to treat rare diseases. Kon kon se? AIMS, PGI, PGIMER, Chandigarh, and one institute that is Institute of Postgraduate Medical Education and Research, Kolkata. Okay, next. The following year, the health ministry opened a digital portal for crowdfunding and voluntary donation. What is the need to have crowdfunding? Because expensive treatment. Individual will be having no capacity to treat such diseases. And especially in India, poor people will not be having any capacity. Yes. So it is the responsibility of the government. Yes. Why? Because we are having welfare state. Article 38. Yes. Article 37, 38. Yadaya, polity. Welfare state. That is why government is providing. So, digital por portal for crowdfunding, voluntary donation with the information about patient and their rare disease, the is estimated cost of treatment and bank details of the center of excellence. The donor can choose the center of excellence and patient treatment they wish to support. Each center of excellence also has its own rare disease fund, which is used to approve from its governing authority. In 2024 August, the government told the parliament that financial assistance up to 24 crore had been released to centers of excellence for treating rare disease patients until August in the current financial year. Before that, kuch data diya hua hai. Theke? Some facts about rare disease. 7,000, according to the National Institute of Health, there are 7,000 rare diseases. Okay, 7,000 rare diseases, only about 5% of the rare disease can be treated. So out of 7,000, only 5% can be treated. Most of the rare diseases can be diagnosed with the genetic testing. Why? Because most of them are congenital. They are inherited disease. Okay, the rare disease are not easily detected, which is why there is a delayed diagnosis. And in India, it affects nearly 30 million people, which means 3 crore people in India. Okay, that is why we are having dedicated policy, which is national policy for rare disease. One second, center of excellence to treat that disease. And third, digital portal for crowdfunding and voluntary donation. Is it okay? Next. Rare disease hota kya hai? WHO gave the definition that debilitating lifelong condition that affects one or fewer people out of 1000 people. Okay? Ek hazar logo mein se sirf ek vyakti ko hone wale disease ko rare disease bola hai. WHO na hai. Rare disease also known as orphan disease are conditions that affect a small percentage of population. In India, the impact of rare disease is significant due to the country's large and diverse population. Prevalence and types of rare disease. So India is a home to over 450 identified disease. Overall to kitni hai? 7,000. But out of 7,000 in India, we identified 450 diseases some of uh, some of the most prevalent include spinal muscular atrophy gochers disease and a bahut sari hain ye sari yahan pe likhi hain thalassemia sickle cell anemia sickle cell we have discussed what was sickle cell hai na to aisi jo bhi news mein rahegi hum thoda bahut to usko discuss kar lenge theek hai sickle cell anemia lysosomal storage disorder congenital insensitivity to pain Acquired aplastic anemia, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis, sweet syndrome, pediatric cardiomyopathy, etc. Okay. 50% babies are born with the rare disease. Die within a year. Ye ek issue hai. Dusra, 80% of the disease occur at birth and are genetic in nature. Okay. Congenital in nature. 
एस्टिमेट नाइन टू टेन नंबर ऑफ पीपल इन इंडिया हु सफर फ्रॉम द रेयर डिजीज विच इज ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द ग्लोबल पेशेंट तो एक बार ये पढ़ लेना समझ में आया वॉट इज अवेयर डिजीज बेसिकली दिस इज द्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ ऑल द डिजीजेस कॉन्जेनेटल डिजीज एंड अक्वायर्ड डिजीज सो मोस्ट ऑफ द रेयर डिजीजेस आर कॉन्जेनेटल डिजीजेस दे आर नॉट acquired diseases like communicable diseases non communicable diseases most of them are congenital okay with this okay then around 55 medical conditions that is rare disease including gochers disease lysosomal storage disorder and certain forms of muscular dystrophy are classified as rare disease basically overall how many diseases are rare disease 7000 4 450 rare disease identified in india and how many classified kitni diya hua hai 55 okay overall 55 classified in india present kitni hai 450 unme se 50 classify karke unko treat kar rahe hain theek hai national registry for rare and other inherited disorder started by icmr has record of 14472 rare disease patient in the country therapies are available for less than 5% of the rare disease leading to less than 1 out of 10 patient receiving disease specific care existing treatment are often very expensive while the center provide the financial assistance to various center of excellence kitne hain india mein sirf 3 okay so these diseases can be treated only at three places hai na aims chandigarh and calcutta okay next categories of rare diseases so overall three categories hai one so in india all the rare diseases are classified in three parts or three groups one is group one included diseases that can be treated only one time curative procedure other diseases require long term lifelong treatment which are relatively less costly and the last one is lifelong treatment which is costly okay three types of rare disease although nobody is going to ask you this question in mains but we have to ready for it yes so for prelims is it clear what is rare disease what is rare disease WHO gave definition that one out of one thousand people, okay, rare disease. Uh, how many rare diseases are there? Around seven thousand globally, okay. Out of which four fifty identified in India and fifty five classified. Fifty five classified. Yes. What are the policies that government of India initiated to treat rare diseases? National policy. Rare diseases one. that donation and crowd funding portal second third center of excellence and fourth thing that classification by icmr yes so four initiatives are there give some examples give some examples of rare diseases like sickle cell anemia thalassemia muscular atrophy etc okay and are these diseases acquired diseases or congenital diseases most of them are congenital diseases and only 5% are curable or treatable is it okay yes challenges in diagnosis and treatment so complex a diagnosis hai why because most of them are genetical so those genetical diseases cannot be diagnosed easily diagnosis of rare diseases is challenged due to the lack of specialized medical professionals and testing facilities limited treatment option we have already discussed that only 5% of the rare diseases are treatable awareness and education there is in general lack of awareness among healthcare providers and public jab healthcare providers koi pata nahi hai yes so we cannot expect that normal people like us will be having any knowledge regarding rare diseases then impact on the patient and family financial burden why financial burden because government itself is providing 50 lakh per person to aap samajh sakte hain ki kitna financial burden hoga then emotional stress 
quality of life will be impacted of that particular person government initiative we have already discussed that okay orphan drugs now orphan drugs are the drugs which is used to treat used to treat rare diseases because rare diseases are also known as orphan diseases now orphan drugs are meditation medication specifically developed to treat the rare diseases which are condition affecting a small percentage of the population these diseases are often referred as orphan because they are neglected in terms of research development due to their low prevalence yes research and development uh those tech gi biotech giants are not spending enough money on research and development of such drugs why not profitable simple simple funda yes market driven economy and in the market driven economy they will invest money only on those places where from where they can get good return yes so in this particular research they will not be getting enough return that is why no research and development in india an orphan drug is defined as a medication intended to treat a condition affecting fewer than 5 lakh people in the country okay kya hai dekh lo price in indian rupee for monthly treatment kitna 3 lakh 42000 monthly treatment and overall treatment cost is 41 lakh that is why government is providing 50 lakh per person okay ab inka naam dekh lo ek do ka kya hai when clexta cyprine okay so these are orphan drugs okay next challenges high cost limited market access issue regulatory support theek hai ye sara dekh sakte ho easily ye kuch diseases hai कुछ नाम है उनके लाइक एलाप्रेस फॉर हंटर सिंड्रोम एल्डोराइजाइम फॉर हर्वलर सिंड्रोम विमिजिम फॉर मोविको ए सिंड्रोम दीज आर दी ऑर्फन ड्रग्स एंड सब्सिक्वेंट करस्पॉन्डिंग टू दैट रेयर डिजीजेस नाउ वी हैव कंप्लीटेड द टॉपिक रेयर डिजीजेस एंड ऑर्फन ड्रग्स ओके सिमिलर टू दैट वन मोर टाइप ऑफ डिजीज इज देयर विच इज नोन एज neglected tropical disease by name it is clear tropical means tropical means what in the tropical region and in most of the tropical region which uh, which type of countries are lying developing countries or under developing countries yes or no like african countries asian countries and south american countries okay so neglected why neglected because such diseases are not prevalent in developed developed world these diseases are not prevalent in developed world that is why they neglected these diseases in terms of research and development for the medication that is why these diseases are not known as neglected tropical disease naam mein clear ho gaya tropical diseases which means they have a concentration they are mainly concentrated in the tropical areas tropical areas are present in which countries or which type of countries african asian basically global south yes global south and who is having uh, capacity to develop medication or to do research and development developed the countries so they are neglecting because they are not affected by these diseases now according to the common sense neglected tropical diseases will be communicable diseases or non communicable diseases according to you soch ke batao thoda sa non communicable or communicable non communicable why non communicable nahi yaar communicable or non communicable most of these diseases are communicable diseases okay not non communicable communicable diseases because in developed world non communicable diseases is having greater burden on public health care Communic non communicable diseases means hypertension diabetic 
Okay, so developed world is equally impacted by communicable diseases. But developed world is not having that type of climate where vector vector borne diseases like mosquito borne diseases are very much prevalent because their climatic condition is not suitable for the breeding of mosquitoes. Yes or no? Anna? That is why most of the neglected tropical diseases are communicable diseases, vector borne diseases. Why? Because of our climatic condition. Anna? Dekh lete, neglected tropical diseases are a group of communicable diseases that predominantly affected the impoverished community in tropical and subtropical region. These diseases are often overlooked in the global health priorities. Why? Clear way? Because these are not prevalent in the developed world. So they are often overlooked in the global health priority despite their significant impact on the health, social, economic development. Here are some of the key points of NTDs. NTDs include a variety of disease caused by different pathogens such as viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungi and toxins. Common example such as chikungunya. ये सब हम इंडिया में देखते हैं या नहीं? Chikungunya, dengue, kala azar, elephantiasis, that is lymphatic filariasis. Okay? तो ये सारी diseases के नाम हैं, rabies, dengue, chikungunya, etc. Snake bite. NTDs affect over one billion people worldwide. Still they are neglected. Overall population कितनी है दुनिया की? Eight billion. Yes? So, out of 8 billion, they are impacting 1 billion population worldwide. Still, they are neglected. Okay. Around 1.6 billion people requiring intervention. These diseases are associated with the severe health, social and economic consequences, often perpetuating the cycle of poverty. The epidemiology of NTDs is often complex, involving vector-borne transmission, Animal reservoir and intricate life cycle. Public health control is challenging due to the environmental factors, limited access to the health care in the affected region. Which one is the affected region? Dekhlo. Tropical. Most of the countries are South American, African, and Asian countries. Okay. Basically, underdeveloped or developing countries. Next. India is a home of 12 neglected tropical disease, making it a significant area of concern for public health effort. NTDs are a significant public health concern in India, affecting millions of people, particularly Usme se bhi kon se honge? impoverished region. Here are some of the points. Common, okay? Kya naam hai iska? Essay. Riasis, the type of intestinal worm infection, hookworm infection, trichu, riasis, dengue fever, lymphatic filiavasis, trachoma, and meli, meliodiosis. These are all diseases in India. Mein hai. Basically, 12 diseases. You should know the name of the name. Okay? You should remember the name. Because in prelims, they will be giving you the names out of which you have to that uh, eliminate one or two names that this particular disease is not neglected tropical disease. Okay? So revise it. Do teen bar padho ge to ho jayega. Thik hai? Next, leprosy, echinoco, cocosis, visceral, lishmaniasis, rabies. Entities causes significant morbidity and mortality leading to the chronic health issue, disability and social stigma. They are often prevalent in the area with poor sanitation, limited access to clean water and inadequate health care infrastructure. Basically, poor area. Government initiative. Indian government has launched various programs to combat entities including mass drug administration campaign, improving diagnostic and Vector control measure. Efforts are also being made to integrate NTD control with the other health related initiative. Collaborate, collaboration 
with international organization like who and local ngos is crucial for the effectively management and eliminating of entities okay so is it clear rare disease first topic second topic is entities clear ho gaya pura disease wala okay what is entities they are mostly prevalent in tropical region but often neglected why neglected because they are present in the developing and underdeveloped world that is why the developed world is overlooking these diseases despite being large being having large impact of these diseases or india mein kitni hai overall 12 entities are present in india including dengue jo ki abhi season chal raha hai dengue wala okay then with this now second topic that is how bone ossification test work and its application in the law that thing was in the news last week what happened in uh, bombay that baba siddiqui okay one of the politician was killed by four four gunman yes out of which one was minor okay one was having age of 17 year and as we know that in india what is the def definition of a child under 18 okay so that 17 year old kid will be considered as a child and that particular kid will not be tried with the normal bharati nyay sahita yes or no he will be treated under juvenile justice act okay so in the last lecture we have discussed that ncpcr yes so today we will discuss that juvenile justice act as well okay so one thing that mla baba siddiqui claimed before a court in mumbai on sunday that he was 17 year old and should the stride under the juvenile justice act okay first thing second mumbai police crime branch which sought the custody of accused said that aadhar card found on that particular individual is showing that he is 19 year old so there is a dispute regarding his age okay and in india manipulation with respect to date of birth can be easily done yes or no dekha hai aapne one of the candidate of upsc is playing with the upsc yes and she is still playing with the upsc okay so aadhar card is saying that he is 19 year old but he is claiming that he is 17 year old and he should be tried under juvenile justice act why Ju juvenile justice act because under this particular act punishment will not be that much severe okay and he will not be sent into the that normal prison where most of the criminal will be sent he will be sent in the child uh, that child prison bol sakte hain usko aap child welfare homes okay to determine whether the accused was a minor the magistrate order bone ossification test which was carried out in the state run jj hospital after the report established that the accused dharmaraj kashyap was not a minor the court remanded him in the police custody until the october 21 now what is ossification this is the process of ossification okay ossification is the term used to describe a process of bone formation by deposition of calcium in the fetal heline cartilage all bones develop from the kya naam hai iska pad lo theek hai so basically this particular ossification process will start when fetus start starts developing in the womb of the mother that calcium deposition starts so basically in the bone ossification test they will measure that calcium deposit in your bone and on the basis of that they will determine your age that is the bone ossification test nothing else so what is the bone ossification why it is the natural process of bone formation it starts from the early developmental stage of the fetus and continues until the adolescence 
differ slightly from individual to individual based on the stage of development of the bones experts can determine the approximate age of the person bone ossification test x-ray of the few bones such as those of hands like wrist the wrist bone okay iska hoga bone ossification test wrist are conducted to determine the skeletal and biological development the images may be compared with the X-ray of the standard development, which can assist in determining the age. The analysis could also be based on the scoring system that looks individual bone on the hands and wrist and their growth and compare them with the standard of maturation of bone among the certain population. So, what is bone ossification test? Ossification is the normal process. Okay, it is the natural process in which in certain cartilage, kya naam tha uska cartilage ka? Mesenchymal, mesenchymal cartilage, where calcium will be deposited. And in bone ossification test, that calcium deposition will be measured with the standard measurement. And on the basis of that, your age will be determined. In what cases, where there is a doubt with respect to your age? Is it okay? <coughs> This is bone ossification test. This can be asked in the prelims, not in the mains. Under section 94 of Juvenile Justice Act. Where it is obvious. Sunilo Where it is obvious based on the appearance that said person is a child. The board can proceed without confirmation of the age. But if there is a reasonable ground of for doubt. The board undertake the process of age determination. So it is mentioned in the Juvenile Justice Act. Okay. That if there is a doubt with respect to the age. Aap baat kyo kar ho dono? If there is a doubt with respect to the age of an accused. Then board can order that age determination test. Which is known as ossi bone ossification test. And which is mentioned in Juvenile Justice Act section 94. Evidence has to be obtained from the date of the birth certificate from the school, the matriculation or equivalent certificate from the concerned examination board. If these are not available, a birth certificate issued by a municipal corporation or authority or panchayat may be concerned. So, if you don't get it then you have to do Now, this person is claiming that I am 17 years old. Aadhaar card is saying 19 years old. Doubt ho gaya? Okay, and that can be ordered only in the absence of these age shall be determined by the ossification test or any other latest medical age determination test conducted on the orders of the committee or the board in order in an order passed by March this year Supreme Court also said that test such as ossification test is the last in order of priority to determine the age. So it should be the last priority. It is the order of the Supreme Court. Okay. Next, the court have held that the test cannot override the documentary evidence on the age of such an accused person. Okay. So it depends upon the court whether they are accepting the date which is written in the Aadhaar card or not. Getting my point? Okay. The next thing is, in some cases, court have rejected the pleas by accused seeking a test when documentary evidence is already present. The point is, the documentary evidence that, that is present before the court is not the matriculation certificate or any such birth certificate. It is Aadhaar card, which is not written in the juvenile justice, okay, which is not mentioned as a documentary evidence in the juvenile justice act. Otherwise, court may not have been ordered that bone ossification test. Wo usi ko maan leta. Kyunki yehi diya hua na pe, that, that ossification te test cannot override the documentary evidence. So it should be the last resort. Ossification test. Then, how reliable the bone ossification test? Variability in observing the maturation of bone could impact the accuracy of the test. Also, the slight difference in the development among the individual leaves some scope for error. Ossification test give a range, say 17 to 19. It will give a range 
and doubt with respect to this range. He is claiming that I am 17 year old. Documentary evidence that is Aadhaar card is suggesting that he is 19 year old. And there is a chances of error in ossification test as well. So Delhi High Court said this year that in POXO Act cases where the age of the victim is determined through an ossification test, the upper age in the test reference range should be considered and the margin of error of two years required to be applied. So basically court will consider the upper, upper range. And what is the upper range? Again, 19 year old. Are you getting my point? Okay, so ultimately he will be prosecuted. Aisa kuch hota hai, to dekhte hai. Now, what is what is age determination significant in the criminal justice system? As we have discussed the POXO Act. And right now we are discussing Juvenile Justice Act. Both the acts are giving definition with respect to child that any person is a child if he is not completed the 18 year age. That is why age determination is crucial in Indian judicial system. Because before 18 year age, if you are an accused, then you will be tried under different set of laws. Yes. And if you are above 18 year of age, then you will be tried under different set of laws. That is why age determination is crucial. In India, a person is below 18 year age is con considered as the minor. The criminal law differentiates between a child as and an adult when it comes to the procedure, correction, rehabilitation and punishment. What is the procedure? A normal accused who is 18, who is above 18 years of age will be tried under Bharati Nyay Sahita. Yes, civil procedure code, criminal procedure code, uske liye ek alag set of laws. Hai. Uska procedure alag hai pura. Then if you are below 18 years age, then you will be tried under Juvenile Justice Act. Punishment will be different. In normal case, you will be sent in the normal prison. Under uh, Juvenile Justice Act, you will be sent in the Juvenile Prison. Anyone below the 18 years is governed by Juvenile Justice Act 2015. A child who is found to be in the conflict with law. Child is found in the conflict with the law. Matlab, a child who, uh, yes, who is a criminal or, or who is accused that he committed certain crime. Law cannot be sent to a prison meant for adult and instead sent to an observation home. Okay? Instead of a court, the child is brought before the juvenile justice board comprising a magistrate and two social workers with the experience in the working with the children. After an inquiry, the board may direct the child to be let off with an admonition, community service or maximum three years in a special homes. Special homes ka matlab hoi hai. Juvenile prison, basically. Okay. Next, the following amendment in Juvenile Justice Act 2021 in cases where a child is above the age of 16 years has been apprehended for a heinous crime. Okay. So basically, Juvenile Justice Act, Juvenile Justice Act classified children into two parts after this particular amendment. Okay. One that is from zero to 16 years of age and other children that is 16 to 18 years of age. Okay. So those who have zero to 16 years, they will be examined by juvenile justice board and sent to the juvenile prison. They will be assessed by juvenile justice board, may be sent to the normal prison or juvenile prison. It is the process. So this and why, why this particular amendment was made? Is there any reason? <clears throat> what is the background of this particular amendment? Yes, Nirbhaya case. One of the accused in Nirbhaya case, that Delhi gang rape case that one of the accused was below 18 years of age. And after that, government constituted one committee, that is Justice Verma Committee. And that committee recommended this particular amendment. Okay, that is the background. 
to accept those recommendations government amended juvenile justice act in 2021 is it okay so in the cases where a child above the age of 16 years has been apprehended for the heinous crime for which the minimum punishment is seven years imprisonment the juvenile justice board must conduct a preliminary assessment with regard to his mental and physical capacity to commit such offense ability to understand the consequences of the offense and the circumstances in which he allegedly committed the offense before deciding whether the child should be tried as an adult or not okay with this okay so after this amendment overall children are classified into two parts one zero to 16 another category is 16 to 18 those who are involved in the some heinous crime okay with this next juvenile justice act iske baare mein bhi dekh lete hain thoda it is the comprehensive law in india that address the need of a children in conflict with the law and those in the need of care and protection here are some of the key aspect basically juvenile justice act is all about four things first thing is juvenile justice board second thing is child welfare committee third thing is cara and fourth thing are other provisions juvenile justice board it is the constitutional body sorry statutory body not constitutional body juvenile justice board is the statutory body child welfare committee is the statutory body and cara is the statutory body this body will will do that preliminary inquiry that whether a person should be sent into that prison or juvenile home or yeah simple dart ke chhod dena chahiye child welfare committee will be looking after those children who are in the conflict with law and those who are present in the juvenile home okay and that cara will be looking into the matter of adoption okay earlier that cara was not having a statutory status but juvenile justice act 2021 or 15 hai na pehle to ye 2015 hai baad mein isme ek amendment hua that is in 2021 so basically it gave constitute uh, statutory status to juvenile justice board child welfare committee and cara okay what are other provisions purpose the act aims to provide a child friendly approach in the adjudication and deposition disposition of matter involving the children it focuses on the rehabilitation and reintegration of the children through various child care institute juvenile justice board first thing the juvenile justice board is responsible for handling the cases like the normal court for normal people juvenile justice board is nothing but the court for the juveniles handling the cases involving children in the conflict with the law it ensures that the children are treated differently from the adults and provide for their rehabilitation so this is the first institute statutory status the second child welfare committee child welfare committee deals with the children in need of care protection it has the authority to make decision regarding the care protection treatment development rehabilitation of such children okay two institute other provisions jo kya hai age of juvenility act defines a juvenile as a person who is below 18 years of age heinous offenses for children aged between 18 to 16 to 18 year who committed heinous offense the act allows preliminary assessment by juvenile justice board to decide if they should be tried as an adult or not adoption the act streamlined the adoption process and established central adoption 
रिसोर्स ऑथोरिटी दैट इज कारा सो बेसिकली जुवेनाइल जस्टिस एक्ट इज ऑल अबाउट थ्री बॉडीज वन इज जुवेनाइल जस्टिस बोर्ड दैट इज नथिंग बट द कोर्ट फॉर ऑल द जुवेनाइल्स यस सेकेंड वन इज चाइल्ड वेलफेयर कमेटी वॉट इज चाइल्ड वेलफेयर कमेटी जैसे ही बोर्ड का काम खत्म हुआ चाइल्ड वेलफेयर कमेटी विल कम इन टू पिक्चर यस ओ नो चाइल्ड वेलफेयर कमेटी विल लुक आफ्टर ऑल द थिंग्स प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ दैट चाइल्ड केयर ऑफ दैट चाइल्ड रिहेबिलिटेशन री इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ दैट चाइल्ड एंड वन मोर बॉडी इज देयर दैट इज कारा सेंट्रल अडोप्शन रिसोर्स ऑथोरिटी so these three statutory authorities established by juvenile justice act okay rehabilitation and social reintegration the act emphasizes the rehabilitation and reintegration of children through various means such as foster care sponsorship after care etc penalties the act include provision for penalties of offense against the children such as cruelty employment of children for begging exploitation Juvenile Justice Act 2015 is a significant step towards ensuring the rights and welfare of children in India providing a framework for protection care and the rehabilitation is it okay so with respect to your social justice paper we have completed or almost completed that child topic hai na social justice paper social justice section of gs paper 2 yes we have completed that pokso act we have completed juvenile justice act this is all for that particular topic isse bahar usme topic mein question nahi jayega theek hai next what is juvenile this topic is related to your society kyunki ab itna padhi liya hai to pehle ye bhi dekh le theek hai what is juvenile delinquencies before that write down some points with uh, some issues with respect to juvenile justice act fir isko dekhte hain juvenile justice act issues first ncpcr pointed out what was ncpcr national commission for protection of child rights ncpcr pointed out ncpcr pointed out that no child care institution 3 years ago there was one news from bihar muzaffarpur that one mla or mp of that particular area was involved in the abuse of those girl child yes that was nothing but the child care institute and that mla was running that particular institute to so, wahan par overall 58 girls child reported that they were faced abuse from that guardian who was running that child care institute but a famous case tha bahut un cry hua tha us baat pe bihar ka case hai muzaffarpur case kar lena usko search aapko pata chal jayega so that is pointed out by ncpcr ncpcr pointed out that no child care institution is fully complied with the provision of juvenile justice act is fully complied with the provisions of juvenile justice act provisions of juvenile justice act first second issue with this there is no specific criteria there is no specific criteria to check the background of the member to check the background of the members check the background of the members of child welfare committee background of the members of child welfare committee third justice juvenile justice committee juvenile justice committee of supreme court highlighted that highlighted that 
एट हंड्रेड टू वन थाउजेंड अडोप्शन केसेस एट थाउजेंड टू वन हंड्रेड अडोप्शन केसेस आर पेंडिंग इन वेरियस कोर्ट्स अडोप्शन केसेस आर पेंडिंग इन वेरियस कोर्ट्स नेक्स्ट नो क्लियर डेफिनेशन ऑफ सीवियस ऑफेंस एंड मिनिमम सेंटेंस सीवियस ऑफेंस एंड मिनिमम सेंटेंस नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ चाइल्ड मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ चाइल्ड डेवलपमेंट ऑब्जर्व increase in child abuse and trafficking increase in child abuse and trafficking during covid-19 lockdown during covid-19 lockdown during covid-19 lockdown during covid-19 lockdown ठीक है सो दीज कंप्लीट दीज पॉइंट कंप्लीट अवर जुवेनाइल जस्टिस एक्ट जीएस पेपर टू नाउ जीएस पेपर वन वॉट इज जुवेनाइल डिलीक्वेंसी नाम सुना है कभी इसका नो देर वॉज वन इंसिडेंट इन लखनऊ इंसिडेंट फ्रॉम लखनऊ दट One child was playing PUBG for more than three hours. He was interrupted by his mother by saying that "bus ban kar yaar, bahut ho gaya," and he got irritated because of that, and he killed his mother. ये दो दिन दो साल पहले की बात है. He killed his mother. This is juvenile delinquency. ओके डेफिनेशन है सोसाइटी का पार्ट है ये आपका जुवेनाइल डिलीक्वेंसी रेफर्स टू द पार्टी पार्टिसिपेशन ऑफ माइनर टिपिकली इंडिविजुअल अंडर 18 इयर्स ऑफ एज इन इनलीगल एंड एंटी सोशल एक्टिविटीज हियर हैव सम की पॉइंट्स अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द जुवेनाइल डिलीक्वेंसी जुवेनाइल डिलीक्वेंसी इन्वॉल्व अनलॉफुल बिहेवियर कमिटेड बाय माइनर्स दैट वुड बी कंसिडर्ड As a crime if committed by an adult, so that is crime for adult, but that is delinquency for for a juvenile or for a children, like uh, pickpocketing. Yes, by children, that is juvenile delinquency, anti-social behavior basically. It also includes persistent behavior of disobedience. एंटी सोशल एक्शन दैट लीड टू लीगल इंटरवेंशन टाइप्स ऑफ ऑफेंडर एक तो होते हैं रिपीटेड ऑफेंडर दीज जुवेनाइल इंगेज इन क्रिमिनल एक्टिविटी कंसिस्टेंटली ओवर द टाइम ऑफ एन कंटिन्यूइंग इन टू एडल्टुड दिस इज अ बिग इशू इफ दैट पर्टिकुलर क्राइम कमिटेड बाय अ चिल्ड्रेन इफ लेफ्ट अनट्रीटेड और अनएड्रेस्ड then he will definitely commit some big crime in the future yes or no that is why there should be some treatment or some redressal mechanism for that age specific offender these juvenile exhibit delinquent behavior during adolescent but typically ceases such activities as they transition into adult kuch time ke liye wo aisi activity kar dete hain but when they they will get mature they will left all these activity common causes what are the common causes why children are uh, children are involving into anti social activity in india is there any specific reason basically we are discussing this particular topic with respect to our society paper so give answer according to that online students why juvenile delinquency increases in india 
सोशल स्ट्रक्चर कैसे यस पुअर पेरेंटिंग बोल सकते हैं यस और नेग्लिजेंट पेरेंटिंग दैट पेरेंट्स आर नॉट गिविंग इनफ अटेंशन टू दैट चाइल्ड यस दिस इज अ वन थिंग Second thing is poor socio-economic condition, especially the poor children who are living in slum areas. Okay, they have high, higher chances that they will get involved in such anti-social activities. Other like explain it mental health issue. Explain how mental health is impacting their social behavior. drugs yes taking drugs is another type of delinquency social media yes exposure to social media this is another issue juvenile delinquency very good more aapka wo mental health wala kya tha issue usko batao presence of social evils in society like like what rahul डिस्क्रिमिनेशन बच्चों को क्या समझ में आएगा डिस्क्रिमिनेशन इतना नहीं आएगा चेंजिंग सोशल स्ट्रक्चर लाइक डिस इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ जॉइंट फैमिली अवलियर दैट जॉइंट फैमिली वॉज टेकिंग केयर ऑफ दैट चाइल्ड इन दी सोशलाइजेशन यूर ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स प्लेड एन इंपॉर्टेंट रोल बट राइट नाउ बोथ द पेरेंट्स आर वर्किंग that particular child is left at the home okay and someone else is taking care of that particular children earlier that socialization was done by your grandparent yes and they will constantly checking your activities yes so one of the major factor is change in the social structure that we are transi transitioning from joint family structure to a uh, nuclear family structure so that social support or the agent of socialization is missing that is your grandparent or extended joint family that was taking care of your socialization okay there is one more sociological term that is adult personality stabilization like various uh, stories like dadi nani ki jo stories hain so they are moral stories यस yes. तो उससे भी हम बहुत कुछ सीखते थे दैट इज ऑल्सो मिसिंग नाउ एवरीथिंग इज अवेलेबल ऑन इंटरनेट सो वैदर देन लिसनिंग टू दो स्टोरीज एंड लर्निंग फ्रॉम द नॉलेज और विजडम फ्रॉम अवर ग्रैंड पेरेंट्स और अवर एडवलीज वी आर मोर एंड मोर रिलाइंग ऑन द इंटरनेट एंड ऑन इंटरनेट यस डेफिनेटली देर देर इज मोर नॉलेज एंड मोर विजडम ऑन द इंटरनेट but there are many such things many other things are also present on internet and there are chances that a child will consume those things as well yes and he or she will be involved in anti social activity so one of the major factor is that change in this societal structure from joint family system to nuclear family system second thing is change in value system earlier the value system was collectivism yes that collective collective identity hoti thi hamari family ye wo hai na wo sab collectivism now that collectivism is turning into individualism my liberty my freedom my life my choice like this okay so change in the societal structure change in the value system aur baki to sara hai hi sahi like internet aur duniya bhar ki baatein wo sara aa jayega ठीक है ये हो गया एंड मोर ओवर सच एक्टिविटीज आर मोर प्रेवलेंट इन अर्बन एरिया वैदर देन इन रूरल एरिया वाई वॉट इज द रीजन गांव में भी आजकल वाईफाई चलने लगा है लैक ऑफ एजुकेशन अर्बन एरिया में कैसे होगा I am saying that child delinquency or juvenile delinquencies are more 
common in urban areas rather than in a rural area. Why? Yes, in a rural area, that social structure is still intact. First, second, in a rural area, the sense of anonymity is not there. But in urban area, nobody knows you. Whatever you are doing, just do. Yes or no? Nobody is going to stop you. But in a rural area, everyone knows you. And those people will act as an agent of social control. Aap society mein ye padenge. Hai na? Agent of social control. But in urban area, anonymity is the value. Yes? So nobody is acting as an agent of social control. Ab jab social control nahi hai, to aapke mammi papa ne dekha nahi. To fir to, jo man mein aai, wo karo. Yes? ये तीन चीजें सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट है बाकी तो ये लिखा हुआ है पीयर इन्फ्लुएंस है एसोसिएटेड विद दी डेलिक्वेंट पीयर कैन एनकरेज सिमिलर बिहेवियर सोशो इकोनॉमिक फैक्टर पॉवर्टी लैक ऑफ साइकोलॉजिकल फैक्टर मेंटल हेल्थ इशू सब्सटेंस अब्यूज पर्सनालिटी डिसऑर्डर एटसेट्रा ठीक है लेकिन दो तीन पॉइंट और लिखना है इसमें पहला चेंज इन दी सोशल स्ट्रक्चर सोशल स्ट्रक्चर वन फ्रॉम जॉइंट फैमिली टू जॉइंट फैमिली टू न्यूक्लियर फैमिली इंपॉर्टेंट है सेकेंड चेंज इन दी वैल्यू सिस्टम दैट इज फ्रॉम कलेक्टिविज्म टू इंडिविजुअलिज्म एंड थर्ड फ्रॉम रूरल एरिया टू अर्बेनाइजेशन and what is present in urbanization anonymity these are the three important factors likh lijiye jaldi se okay <clears throat> prevention educational program counseling therapy community program sab common hai dekh lena isko ek acha quote hai ye There is but one way to eliminate juvenile delinquency. That is by providing each child in America, each child in India. लिख देंगे यहाँ पे बस. Each child in India, a competent parents, because they are the primary agent of socialization. Okay, so good parenting is the solution. On Samsung workers' right to unionize, that was all also in the news. that protest was protest is going on in chennai okay that samsung plant is there and all those workers are protesting so that protest all those workers are on strike and they are exercising their right to strike now hamare wo pura kaam ka nahi hai there is two thing right to protest and another thing is a right to strike what is the difference between two one is right to protest one is right to strike are they same no how they are different lag to same hai bhai yes What is right to protest? What is right to strike? Is there any difference? Polity class वाले तो बता दो कम से कम. नाक मत कटवाओ यार. हाँ. अरे नहीं यार ऐसा थोड़ी होता है. <laughs> strike में violence कर सकते हैं क्या? नहीं. ऐसा नहीं होता है. No. Yes, Vishal, tell me. And in protest, you can do this. No, yeah. In the right to protest, that is the reasonable restriction which is mentioned in Article Number Nineteen. That public order, morality. Yes. 
these are the reasonable restriction you cannot disturb public order while you are protesting that is why most of the protesters sit on that particular ram leela maidan after taking permission from the government that we will not impact the public order yes or no is the reasonable restriction on the ground of public order government can deny that right to protest okay aisa nahi ho sakta aur kuch any difference tau look article number 19 is there article number 19 is your fundamental right one of the article is saying that right to protest or organized protest is your fundamental right okay right to protest is your fundamental right it is one of the freedom which is mentioned in the constitution like a student protest was going on in oavn yes hua tha that is the protest you got the idea this is your fundamental right if some of the demands are not met by the government then you can organize peaceful protest not violent protest so right to peaceful protest is your fundamental right is it okay this is the first thing second thing right to strike is not a fundamental right what is right to strike right to strike can be exercised by those people who are involved in some organization as a worker or in some of the industries as a worker and if they are going on strike that industry that industrial work or their production will be impacted okay that is why they are not having fundamental right to strike they are having right to strike as a legal right okay they are having right to strike as a legal right but not as a fundamental right because in future government employee can say that we are having right to strike as a fundamental right and they will also starts not performing their duties which are assigned to them and then that particular thing can affect public at large yes or no suppose doctors are on strike that entire health care system will collapse yes if police personnel will on strike entire law and order system will collapse are you getting my point सो so, स्ट्राइक का मतलब है अपना काम छोड़ करके प्रोटेस्ट में बैठना यस सो दिस राइट टू स्ट्राइक इज नॉट अ फंडामेंटल राइट बट राइट टू प्रोटेस्ट इज ए फंडामेंटल राइट विच इज मैं इन आर्टिकल नंबर 19 क्लोज ए एंड आई गोज क्लोज सी वन क्लोज सी यस प्रोटेस्ट कोई भी कर सकता है उसको प्रोटेस्ट बोलते हैं या स्टूडेंट ने कौन सा काम छोड़ा था अपना दोनों में फर्क है ना स्ट्राइक वो कर रहे हैं जो वर्कर्स हैं है ना दोनों में ये फर्क है सबसे बड़ा कि काम आपने पूरा छोड़ दिया उसके बाद आप प्रोटेस्ट करने के लिए जा रहे हो और उसकी डिमांड भी पर्टिकुलर काम से रिलेटेड ही है कि हमारी सैलरी बढ़ा दो हमें ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बनाना है, है ना वो ट्रेड यूनियन से रिलेटेड हो गया स्ट्राइक का लाइक डॉक्टर्स यूनियन अभी पांच मिनट रुक जाओ क्लियर हो जाएगा ठीक है देखते हैं इसको आगे क्लियर हो जाएगा आपको राइट टू स्ट्राइक राइट टू स्ट्राइक लेबर इज अ लीगल राइट रिकोगनाइज विद दर्टेन रेस्ट्रिक्शन अंडर इंडस्ट्रियल डिस्प्यूट एक्ट ओके सुप्रीम कोर्ट डिस्क्राइब स्ट्राइक एज ए फॉर्म ऑफ डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन बाय द वर्कर्स फॉर देयर राइट it is the form of demonstration by the workers so in strike only workers are involved but in protest everybody can be there difference is clear and workers for their rights here you can protest like students were protesting against coaching industry students were protesting against irregularities okay higher fees and other types of exploitation which are going on in old rajendranagar 
students were protesting because some of the students died in that flooding yes are unke kaun se rights hain jo fundamental rights hai usko lekar ke gaye na but workers rights are different like higher wages right to form union yes a regularization of uh, minimum and maximum wage a regularization of working hours it is like this a regularization of service condition work overall community mein se worker ek specific community ho gayi is it okay and they are having specific grievances related to their service condition okay samajh mein aaya na ki this is the whole community whole india out of which one small community is workers community and they are demanding certain rights related to their own community that is the workers service condition their wages their working hours etc is it okay so when they will demonstrate it is known as right to strike and when they will demonstrate the production of that company in which they are working will get impacted or not yes or no when students are protesting they are impacting only their rights like their study hours will get impacted but not but not uh, we can say the working of a particular organization because they are not the part of any organization they are undermining their future if they are sitting on the protest but when these workers are sitting on the protest they are compromising the profit production and other such things of that particular industry of that particular organization of that particular firm for which they are working is it okay or not samajh mein aayi na baat dono mein fark kya hai that is why right to strike is not a fundamental right if right to strike is a fundamental right then industries will not work kyunki wo aaye din baith jayenge yahan plutus ki faculty sari protest pe baith gayi yes or no then who will teach you ye fir bol kya ho ye band ho gaya yaar समझ में आई क्या बात क्लियर है सो राइट टू स्ट्राइक इज डिफरेंट देन राइट टू प्रोटेस्ट प्रोटेस्ट वो हंगर स्ट्राइक हो गया इट इज वन फॉर्म ऑफ प्रोटेस्ट दैट हंगर स्ट्राइक इज वन फॉर्म ऑफ प्रोटेस्ट दैट स्ट्राइक वर्ड ऐसे तो आप फिर बोल दो दैट सर्जिकल स्ट्राइक सो इज इट रिलेटेड टू दिस नो ना वो वर्ड है सिर्फ वहां पे ऐसे एव स्ट्राइक सो दट एव स्ट्राइक इज रिलेटेड टू दिस स्ट्राइक नो देर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन द वर्कर्स स्ट्राइक एंड द अदर फॉर्म ऑफ प्रोटेस्ट अरे हमेशा क्यों जाएंगे लुक वन थिंग one thing one thing they can choose right to protest there is no issue but they are the part of any organization when they joined any particular or organization they signed one contract yes that we will be working for this organization for 6 days in a week and are look look to jao we will work for that particular organization 6 days a week and our shift will be from 8 to 5 ab is time ke baad main kahin protest pe baithta hu then it will be considered as my right to protest it is not the right to strike why because i am doing my duty that is my legal duty because i have signed one contract with this particular organization so during the working hour if i am sitting on the protest that that will be con considered as the strike 
protest one more difference is there strike means an organized way to protest like all of the workers are on the strike are you getting my point or not ek single worker nahi hai all of the workers are on the strike lekin protest pe main akela baith jaun dono mein fark hai basically because of the strike the working are the production or profitability of any organization any industry any firm will get impacted that is why it is regulated by some other acts such as industrial dispute act but right to protest is a civic right it is the basic right that is why it is mentioned in the fundamental right is it okay pakka like bhagat singh sukhdev rajguru they sat on the protest within the jail that was not the strike why because they were not working at that time so that was the protest and that protest is considered as the basic civil right wo sabhi ke paas hoga lekin apna kaam chhod kar ke protest pe baithna wo to strike hui na kyunki aap jis bhi organization ko join karte ho like aapki government job lagti hai तो आपका फिर वो प्रोटेस्ट पे बैठने का अधिकार गया ठीक है वाई क्योंकि आपने कुछ टर्म्स एंड कंडीशन पे साइन किया है सो द नॉर्मल पीपल हु आर एक्सरसाइजिंग देयर राइट टू प्रोटेस्ट विल नॉट बी एक्सरसाइज बाय दो पीपल हु आर एम्प्लॉयड बाय सम ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और बाय द गवर्नमेंट अब ठीक है आई थिंक मैंने अपना बेस्ट बता दिया अब इससे ज्यादा मैं बता नहीं पाऊंगा ठीक है क्या है ना यस yes. हाँ हाँ बेसिकली इन स्ट्राइक यू विल इंपैक्ट द वर्किंग ऑफ एनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फॉर विच यू आर वर्किंग ये सबसे बड़ा डिफरेंस है लाइक like, शाहीन बाग पे प्रोटेस्ट हुआ था दो पीपल हु सिटिंग इन द शाहीन बाग और फार्मर्स प्रोटेस्ट हुआ था वो किसी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के लिए काम कर नहीं रहे थे वो अपने ग्रेवान से रिड्रेस करने के लिए बैठे हुए थे प्रोटेस्ट पे दैट वाज द प्रोटेस्ट लेकिन यही किसी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के लोग बैठने लगे लाइक इन द कलकत्ता रेप एंड मर्डर केस डॉक्टर्स वर सिटिंग ऑन द प्रोटेस्ट But simultaneously they were doing their duty. आपको याद हो तो yes they were performing their duty. और एक होता वो strike पे बैठ गए duty नहीं कर रहे दोनों में फर्क किसी अब हुआ ना so that was not strike that was protest because they were doing their duty performing their duty. Is it okay? So for example they include various forms such as go slow sit in the work. work to the rule absenteeism etc the court has observed that right to demonstrate and therefore the right to strike is an important weapon in the armory of the workers yahan specific mention kya kiya hai humne workers hai na ye sirf workers ke liye hai baki right to protest sabhi ke liye hota hai the right is recognized by almost all the democratic countries the ilo considers the right to strike is a corollary to the right to organize however in 1947 act does not recognize right to strike as absolute right it is not absolute right why because if it will recognize as the absolute absolute right then doctors will sit on protest then entire health system will collapse If workers are sitting on the protest, that industrial production will collapse. इस वजह से ये absolute right नहीं है. Section twenty two prohibits the strike in the breach of contract. ठीक है? Breach of contract or without giving employer notice within the six weeks before striking or within fourteen days of giving such notice or before the expiry of the date of strike specified in the notice or during the pendency of the proceeding before the conciliation officer seven days after the conclusion of such proceedings okay so with respect to protest i can sit on the protest from now onwards 
because there is no obligation of mine with respect to anybody i can sit on protest from this time onwards but if you want to exercise your right to strike then you should give some advance notice some seven days advance notice then that employer will hire one conciliator or some send some conciliator or wo mediation karwayega yadi wo bhi fail ho gaya then they will sit on the protest it is like this in the all india bank employee case the supreme court said that the right to form an association was guaranteed one right to form association is a fundamental right under article number 19 right to protest is also a fundamental right but right to strike is not a fundamental right but the methods used by the union to achieve their purpose must be adhered to the existing industrial laws is it okay then supreme court in br singh versus union of india 1989 upheld that right to form association or union is a fundamental right under article 191 c theek hai then madras high court in ramaswami versus registrar trade union succinctly defined uh, defined the history and object of the trade union act the organization of the labor to enable the collective bargaining collective bargaining means they will bargain with respect to their salary working condition social security such as pension yes or no housing facility working hours etc so a collective bargain ka tool hai ek strike karna right to strike labor is a legal right recognized within the certain ye humne dekh liya hai so basically batana yahi tha what is right to strike what is right to strike it is a legal right and what is right to protest it is a fundamental right difference is clear or not clear hua aapka pakka theek hai hai na so right to strike is a legal right and this is the right which is exercised by the workers or we can say the trade union for the collective bargaining ruk jao collective bargaining but right to protest is a fundamental right it it is the basic civil civil liberties yes which is enshrined in part 3 of the constitution that is article number 19 is it okay right to protest can be exercised by anyone but right to strike is limited to the workers it is the strike against one particular organization for which they are working and why they are striking because they have not satisfied with their salary working condition social security benefits working hours etc is it okay so the those samsung workers that they are working in the factory in tamil nadu they are striking against their working condition is it okay ha kya bol rahe the nahi ja sakte nahi ja sakte government workers strike pe bhi nahi ja sakte hain aur in fact unka right to protest bhi limited hota hai ठीक है अभी आ रहे हैं उस पे इसमें दिया हुआ है मैंने इन इंडिया राइट टू स्ट्राइक इज नॉट अ फंडामेंटल राइट बट ए लीगल राइट और स्टेचुटरी राइट दिस मींस इट इज गवर्न बाय स्पेसिफिक लॉ रादर देन बीइंग गारंटीड बाय द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ये है आपका आर्टिकल नंबर 19 ऑल सिटीजन राइट टू फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच एक्सप्रेशन सब्जेक्टेड टू लिमिटेड वही तो हर चीज पे आपका लिमिटेड रिस्ट्रिक्शन लगा हुआ है primary legislation that addresses the right to strike industrial dispute act which has been subsumed under industrial relation code in some of the lecture we will discuss that industrial relation code this will be the big thing in the case of structural reform in, in india structural reform means like gst GST reformed the entire taxation system, especially the indirect taxation system. This is the structural reform. That one particular thing which is repealed by the government, that is the farm laws. ये भी एक structural reform का part है. If uh, those farm laws would have been implemented, then it will be creating a new type of system in India, like GST has created. So this particular industrial code. that is 2020 will be a next big 
स्ट्रक्चरल रिफॉर्म इन इंडिया ये इम्प्लीमेंट होगा तो इस ये एक नई चीज यहाँ पे लेकर के आएगा वी विल डिस्कस दैट है ना इसके अंदर चार तीन चार कोड है टोटल है ना एक वर्कर्स के लिए है एक इंडस्ट्रीज के लिए सोशल सिक्योरिटी के लिए देखेंगे अंडर दिस लॉ वर्कर्स इन पब्लिक यूटिलिटी सर्विस प्रोवाइड मस्ट प्रोवाइड ए नोटिस ऑफ स्ट्राइक एटलीस्ट सिक्स वीक्स इन एडवांस पब्लिक यूटिलिटी सर्विस लाइक इफ डॉक्टर्स वॉन्ट टू गो ऑन स्ट्राइक देन दे शुड प्रोवाइड एटलीस्ट सिक्स वीक्स एडवांस नोटिस इज इट ओके स्ट्राइक विदाउट प्रॉपर नोटिस or in violation of the condition set by the law can be deemed illegal while the right to form association and union is protected under article number 19 the right to strike itself does not enjoy the same constitutional protection for a strike considered to be legal in india it must be comply with the ye humne pad liya hai theek hai dekh lena isko government employee in india do not have लीगल राइट टू स्ट्राइक ठीक है आपके क्वेश्चन का आंसर गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय कैन नॉट स्ट्राइक वाई वाइल ज्वाइनिंग यू विल बी साइनिंग अ लेटर आप अपने सारे राइट रख देते हो वहां पे कि मुझे बस ये जॉब दे दो आप तो मुझे कुछ नहीं करना है इसके बाद ठीक है तो उसके बाद आपके सारे राइट चले जाएंगे डू नॉट है लीगल राइट टू स्ट्राइक द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया हैज रूल्ड दैट द गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय डू नॉट है फंडामेंटल लीगल मोरल क्या बोल रहे हैं मोरल राइट भी नहीं है आपका ठीक है मोरल और इक्विटेबल राइट टू स्ट्राइक दिस मींस दैट प्राइवेट सेक्टर वर्कर मे स्ट्राइक अंडर सर्टेन कंडीशन गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉयज आर जनरली प्रोहिबिटेड फ्रॉम डूइंग सो ठीक है द रैशनल बिहाइंड this restriction to ensure the continuous and efficient functioning of the public services which are considered essential for the public welfare strikes by the government employee can disrupt these services leading to the significant inconvenience and potential harm to the public is it okay so this is all about right to strike and right to protest is there any doubt right to strike is not a fundamental right it is the legal right which is mentioned in the industrial dispute act and right now it is under industrial relation code 2020 okay but right to protest is a fundamental right because it is the basic civil liberty and government employees do not have any such legal constitutional or in fact moral right to strike samajh gaye ye supreme court ne bhi bol diya hai okay लास्ट टॉपिक आधा घंटा है हमारे पास हो जाएगा दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक वाज इन द न्यूज ये मेंस में कभी भी आ सकता है ओके दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक वाज इन द न्यूज फॉर लास्ट सिक्स टू सेवन इयर्स कॉन्स्टेंटली इन द न्यूज एंड कॉन्स्टेंटली बीइंग हर्ड बाय दिल्ली हाई कोर्ट एंड राइट नाउ सुप्रीम कोर्ट स्टार्टेड हियरिंग ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर मैटर ओके For last two years, Delhi High Court was hearing that matter, and अभी कल से, okay? ये कल का ही article है, okay? Now Supreme Court started hearing on this particular matter, and this matter is related to marital rape. What is marital rape? Yes, forced sex, okay? Forced sex. in the institution of marriage or non consensual sex in the institution of marriage which is termed as marital rape this particular rape or form of sexual abuse is not a crime in india why why it is not a crime in india yes it is one form of exception first thing and in india marriage is considered as a yes sacred sanct in nature or sacred in nature okay so it is considered that wife should submit to his husband to her husband okay unko submit karna hi hoga and this particular notion is brought or inherited from the british law one डॉक्टर है डॉक्टर ऑफ कोवर्चर 
which is also saying the same thing that after marriage woman should submit her dignity her authority to her husband completely okay so anything which is done by her husband after marriage will not be considered as the abuse okay now the point is there is a contradiction in the law itself why before marriage if anything is happening or non consensual sex or forced sex is happening which is considered as the sexual abuse which is considered as the rape but just after marrying just after marriage if the same thing is happening which is not a crime in india yes this is the contradiction in the law or not because of the marriage you are not considering the same act as a abuse as a crime as a rape but the same thing is happening before marriage then it is a punishable offense so it is the dichotomy in the law it is the contradiction in the law yes or no that is why this particular thing was in the news and again the same committee which was constituted after delhi gang rape that is justice verma committee kahin pe bhi women rights ke bare mein baat aayegi you should write justice verma committee okay so justice verma committee suggested that marital rape should be criminalized okay now let's have a discussion on this a three judge bench headed by chief justice of india dy chandrachud has begun hearing a batch of petition challenging the constitutional validity of exception 2 under section 375 of the indian penal code 1860 the challenges also extend to the exception under section 2 63 of the bharati nyay sanhita because that ipc is subsumed by bharati nyay sanhita to isme ye kisme diya hua hai section uh, 2 of 63 now these provisions grant legal immunity to indian husband by stipulating that sexual intercourse or act by a man with his wife provided she is not under 18 years of age do not constitute rape so if any husband is raping his wife that will not be considered as a rape this is the exception which is give, given under bharati nyay sanhita is it okay abhi have that particular thing was mentioned 14 years of age but one of the judgment of supreme court changed this particular thing and increased the age that is 18 years लेकिन सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने उसको चेंज नहीं किया सिर्फ एज बढ़ा दिया ओके बिकॉज दैट फोर्टीन वॉज द माइनर एज दैट इज वाई सुप्रीम कोर्ट इनक्रीज कोई चेंज नहीं हुआ बहुत बड़ा वॉट डज वॉट डू स्टेटिस्टिक्स से वाई डेटा ऑन मेविटल वेप रिमेन्स लिमिटेड लिमिटेड वाई वाई लिमिटेड बिकॉज देर मैरिज विल डी स्टेबिलाईज इफ दे आर कमिंग आउट एंड कंप्लेनिंग देन द मैरिज विल बी गॉन that is why most of the women are not reporting this particular crime so the data on marital rape remains due to uh, remains limited due to the stigma and legal barriers available statistics are deeply concerning legal barrier kya hai usko rape consider kiya hi nahi jata this is one of the legal, uh, one of the biggest legal barrier okay next the data from national family health survey conducted between 2019 to 21 indicates that nearly one third means every third woman nearly one third woman married woman have experienced physical or sexual violence at the hands of their husband okay nearly one third 82% of indian women can say no to sex in marriage this is said by national family health survey so it is nothing but a type of forced sex that is going on inside the institution of marriage which is considered as sacred and ironically this particular crime cannot be reported because it is not considered as the crime yes next thing additionally global statistics reveal that approximately 3 quarter of of all sexual assault 
this particular thing can be used in your essay paper okay that additionally global statistics reveal that the approximately three quarter of the all sexual assault transpire within the intimate setting often perpetrated by the someone familiar to the survivor okay so two facts are important one uh, all the all these two facts are give, given by national family health survey 5 one fact is this that 82 percent of married women are saying that they cannot say no to the sex okay they have to do that first second thing one third of the total women are saying that they faced some form of physical or sexual violence by their husband what are the genesis of exception so marital rape exception mre means marital rape exception is a colonial relic originating from doctrine of coverture in english common law which severely curtailed married woman's legal autonomy elucidated by supreme court in joseph shine versus union of india 2018 this doctrine assumed that the husband and wife became single entity ye romanticize karna theek lagta hai but in terms of legality is not a good idea okay so it is a single entity after marriage that is a very being or legal existence of the woman is suspended are you getting this point? Doctrine of Kovarchev bol kya hai? That legal existence of the woman is suspended during the marriage or at least is incorporated and consolidated into that of the husband. Okay? One of the earliest instances of codification of marital rape exception can be traced back to the British jurist Matthew Hell who wrote 1736 treaty that the husband cannot be guilty of rape committed by himself upon his lawful wife for by their mutual matrimonial consent and contract the wife has given up herself in this kind unto her husband which she cannot retract is it okay so this marital rape exception thing is coming from english common law and from which doctrine Doctrine of coverture, where they are assuming that wife should submit her entire authority to her husband. Is it okay? Next thing, however, in 1991, England outlawed the marital web exception in the landmark case of R versus R, underscoring that the common law doctrine is no longer represented the true position of a wife in the present day society. So they outlawed this particular thing, but we are still continuing with that thing. Okay. So when our prime minister is saying that we should leave that colonial mentality. Okay. So we should also leave such laws as well. Okay. Because this is colonial relic. Why are we not removing it? We are still continuing with this. What are the challenges before the Supreme Court? Section 375 of the IPC delineates seven conditions under which sexual intercourse is deemed rape, such as when it occurs without the consent of the woman or when the consent is obtained through the coercion. That will be considered as the rape. Those convicted are punished with a prison term of at least 10 years, which can be extended to the life sentence along with the possible fine. However, the provision stipulates two exceptions. The first exception pertains to the medical procedure as per the second exception, sexual intercourse or sexual acts by men with his wife, which is known as marital rape exception. reports that which one is the safest and which one is the dangerous city for women. Okay, so New Delhi. Next, the marital rape exception therefore creates a legal fiction whereby even if all the elements of consent of the offense of rape are met, the conviction cannot take place if the parties are married and the wife is over 18 years of age. Yes or no? If they are having marriage 
और 18 ईयर से ज्यादा है वो कभी भी प्रूफ कर ही नहीं पाएंगे कि उनके साथ रेप हुआ है इज इट ओके नेक्स्ट थिंग हाउ एवर अ मैरिड वुमन कैन सीक रिकोर्स टू द अदर क्रिमिनल प्रोविजन सच एज सेक्शन 85 फाइव ऑफ भारतीय न्याय संहिता विच क्रिमिनलाइज सब्जेक्टिंग अ वुमन फ्रॉम वुमन टू क्रुअलिटी सो क्रुअलिटी इज अ डिफरेंट थिंग आपको मिल जाएगा वहां से कुछ जस्टिस मिलेगा बट द रियल जस्टिस लाइज विद द क्रिमिनलाइजेशन ऑफ द मैरिटल वेप यस इट इज नॉट द क्रुअलिटी इट इज द वेप लेकिन उनको न्याय मिलेगा सिर्फ इसको लेकर के डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस एक्ट को लेकर के मिल जाएगा द पटिशन द पटिशनर सेव आर्ग्यूड दैट द एक्सेप्शन इज अनकॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल सिंस इट वायलेट्स द होस्ट फंडामेंटल राइट फॉर मोस्ट अमंग द आर्टिकल 14 यस और नो बिकॉज आर्टिकल 14 इज सेइंग व्हाट राइट टू इक्वालिटी and right to equality in fact article 15 is also saying right to equality yes that is no citizen of india can be discriminated only on the grounds of race religion caste sex place of birth residence and descent yes but on the basis of marriage you are discriminating women one woman which is unmarried so if anything which is happening or anything any criteria which i have mentioned under section 375 of ipc the, that will be considered as the rape but all the criteria are there but that particular woman is married then that will not be considered as the rape so it is nothing but the violation of article 14 article 15 that is a right to equality one of the biggest argument against marital rape exception the marital rape exception create two distinct classes of victim of non consensual non consensual sex by denying married woman the protection of laws that have extended to the unmarried woman this according to the petitioner also offend the principle of substantive equality failing to address the systematic barriers to ensure that all women regardless of their marital status receive equal protection against the sexual violence next the by specifically disadvantaging married women the married marital rape exception violates their right to not to discriminate under article 15 yahi wala jo maine samjhaya okay that discrimination can be possible on some grounds okay lekin marriage ground pe possible nahi hai theek hai next another important facet in the purported purported violation of right to privacy and bodily integrity under article 21 supreme court ruling in case puttu swami versus union of india one of the most important case hai na not only clarified that privacy was a fundamental right but also affirmed the concept of decisional autonomy that is right of each each individual to determine how and for what purpose their body may be used so this is the violation of the right to privacy as well as noted by the constitutional law expert gautam bhatia that the true brilliance of puttu swami lies it clearly established that the right to privacy is not merely anchored in the physical spaces and institutions such as marriage but it is fundamentally tied with the individual self determination okay but this particular exception is violating all those things the right is therefore inseparable from the ability to make choices regarding the most integral aspect of one's body and life in joseph sheen case the top court built on the jurisprudence by observing that the familial structure cannot be regarded as the private space where the constitutional rights are violated this is one of the most important thing kya bol rahe hain that familial structure cannot be regarded as the private spaces where constitutional rights are violated and that doing so to obstruct the unfolding vision of the constitution 
ओके वुमेन हु एक्सपीरियंस स्पाउजल वायलेंस सबसे ज्यादा कहां पर है कर्नाटक देन आई गेस नन अदर देन वन ऑफ द बेस्ट स्टेट ऑफ इंडिया ठीक है नेक्स्ट इन मार्च 2022, थाउजेंड एंड कर्नाटक हाई कोर्ट इन ऋषिकेश साहू वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ कर्नाटक एंड अदर्स रूल दैट द मैरिड मैन कैन बी प्रोसिक्यूटेड फॉर वेपिंग हिज वाइफ लेकिन क्या हुआ बाद में इस पे स्टे लगा दिया कि ऐसा नहीं करना है ओके रिलाइंग ऑन टू टू थाउजेंड एंड थर्टीन रिपोर्ट ओथर्ड बाय जस्टिस जे एस वर्मा कमेटी रिकमेंडेड द एबोल्यूशन ऑफ मेरिटल वेप एक्सेप्शन जस्टिस एम नाग प्रसन्ना रीजन दैट नो लीगल एक्सेप्शन कैन बी एब्सोल्यूट एस टू लाइसेंस क्राइम अगेंस्ट दी सोसाइटी ओके हाउ एवर इंस्टीड ऑफ स्ट्राइकिंग इट डाउन ही मेड द एक्सेप्शन इन एप्लीकेबल इन द केसेस इन्वॉल्विंग द कमीशन ऑफ हीनियस सेक्शुअल ऑफेंस बाय हजबेंड अगेंस्ट देयर वाइफ्स ये कोई इश्यू हो गया द केसेस स्टेम्ड फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड एंड सेवनटीन कंप्लेन बाय अ वुमन अगेंस्ट हर हजबेंड ऋषिकेश साहू अक्यूजिंग हिम ऑफ कमिटिंग मल्टीपल सेक्शुअल ऑफेंस then he was also charged with the sexual assault under pokso us pe ye bhi charge tha for abusing their daughter as well okay so an appeal was subsequently challenged in the high court's decision resulting in the interim stay us pe kya laga diya supreme court ne interim stay so that was the progressive decision made by karnataka high court but that was stayed by supreme court और उस पर फिर दिल्ली हाई कोर्ट का भी जजमेंट है अभी आगे लेकिन वो भी स्प्लिट जजमेंट है तो कुछ हुआ नहीं इन 2022 मैंने आपसे कहा ना कि ये जो पर्टिकुलर न्यूज है ये पिछले छह सात सालों से न्यूज में बनी हुई है और इस पर अभी तक कोई क्वेश्चन आया नहीं है सो देर हैव चांसेस दैट वन क्वेश्चन कैन बी फ्रेम्ड इन जी पेपर वन और इन जी पेपर टू है ना और इनफैक्ट इन जीएस पेपर फोर एज वेल एथिक्स वाले में भी आ सकता है ठीक है तो ये टॉपिक थोड़ा सा कॉम्प्रिहेंसिवली कवर कर दो एक बार इन माई टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी टू दिल्ली हाईकोर्ट वेंडर्ड अ स्प्लिट वर्डिक्ट अब स्प्लिट में क्या है टू जज बेंच थी वन जज सेज दैट इट इज अ क्राइम एंड वन सेट इट इज नॉट अ क्राइम तो कोई कंक्लूसिव बात वहां से भी नहीं निकल के आई जस्टिस राजीव शाकडेव डीम्ड द मेरिटल वेप एक्सेप्शन अनकॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल असर्टिंग दैट इट वायलेट्स वुमेन्स बॉडीजी ऑटोनोमी एंड एक्सप्रेशन ही कैरेक्टराइज द एक्सेप्शन एज स्टीव पेटवीआर की एंड मिसोजनी एडिंग दैट द क्लासिफिकेशन इन माई ओपिनियन इज अनरीजनेबल एंड मैनिफेस्टली आर्बिट्ररी एज इट इंप्लाइज दैट द फोर्स सेक्स आउटसाइड मैरिज कॉन्स्टिट्यूट रियल वेप वेर एज द सेम एक्ट विद इन द मैरिज डज नॉट कन्वर्सली जस्टिस सी हरी शंकर ओपाइंड दैट द विद इन द मैरिज सेक्शुअल रिलेशन आर अ लेजिटिमेट एक्सेप्शन मेकिंग मैरिटल वेप एक्सेप्शन लीगल इंट्रोड्यूसिंग इन टू द मैरिटल रिलेशन द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ द हजबेंड बींग रिगार्डेड एज द वाइफ वेपिस्ट इफ ही हैज on one or more occasion sex with her without consent would in my view be completely antithetical to the very institution of marriage as understood in the country both in the fact and in the law is it okay unhone kaha ki society mein aisa hum mante hi nahi hai yahi kehne ka matlab hai to na to society manti hai na law manta hai to main iske isko exception nahi dunga then now this was the thing which was said by the center because in almost all the cases one of the petitioner is whom one is one is the petitioner is the center of state basically it is the government to so delhi high court ne pucha ki aapka kya mat hai is pe aap kya bolte ho center ne kya kaha union government's latest supreme court affidavit is the first time that it has been on record opposed the striking down of so basically central government is opposing okay during the proceeding before the delhi high court the government had said that the issue needs wider consultation that a review of existing criminal law was pending at that time 
drawing from the Justice Shankar's opinion, the center has argued that the marriage creates a continuing expectation of reasonable sexual excesses, which is absent in the case of a stranger or another intimate relationship. While acknowledging that a man has no fundamental right to violate his wife's consent, it has contended that classifying such act as a rape is excessively harsh and disproportionate. And it has also apprised the court that the criminalizing marital rape would affect the sanctity of the institution of marriage and potentially result in the false allegation of marital rape. Is it okay? So that was the stand made by center. Okay? Ha. Huh. <coughs> Hmm. Hmm. The, the marriage institution will be definitely destabilized. That is why center is saying that it needs wider consultation. Because the point is uh, how to prove that it, it is consensual or not. First thing. Because false allegation is not so much. है ना ये भी तो एक एस्पेक्ट बनता है यहां पे तो अभी तक इस पे डिबेट ही चल रही है कि क्या होना चाहिए यस yes? तो अभी तक के डिबेट के लिए वे मैरिटल वेप एक्सेप्शन इज अ लीगल थिंग इन इंडिया अंडर आर्टिकल अंडर सेक्शन 375 क्लोज टू ऑफ आईपीसी इज इट ओके व्हाट इज एक्सेप्शन दैट इफ हस्बैंड इज डूइंग एनीथिंग विद हिज वाइफ Provided that she is above 18 years of age, then it will not be considered as marital rape or any type of rape. This is the exception which is provided by the law. Okay. There are two judgments with respect to that. One judgment that is which Sahu judgment? Kya naam hai? Vishikesh Sahu judgment where Karnatak High Court said that it is an offense and it should be criminalized. It is unconstitutional. But that thing was stayed by the Supreme Court. And Delhi High Court gave split judgment with respect to that. And this is the stand of center we have discussed. What is the stand? Center is saying that, yes, okay, husband is not having, kya likha hua hai? Hmm? Yes, center is saying that acknowledging that a man has no fundamental right to violate his wife's consent. No fundamental right. But it has contended that classifying such act as a rape is excessively harsh and disproportionate. Why? Because center is an opinion or central government is an opinion that the classification of consensual and non-consensual is a difficult thing. Especially difficult thing to prove in the court. And the allegation of false rape, okay, or forced sex will be there. That is why, while moving forward, we need wider consultation on this particular issue. Okay, so this is a good thing that we have to do in this way. What is the law that we have to do in this control? Is it okay? But the data which is given by National Family Health Survey is threatening. Is frightening. Yes or no? 82% of the total women cannot say no to sex. And one third of them are facing some form of physical and sexual violence from their spouses. It is the reality in India. Is it okay? So, dono hi, kyunki National Family Health Survey ka bhi jo data hai, wo government ka data hai. Aisa bhi nahi hai ki aap kisi over ka data la kar ke bol rahe ho. Ye data bhi government nahi diya hai. Now it is the responsibility of the welfare state to solve this particular issue. Okay. So this is from my side. Four topics that we have discussed. One is <coughs> rare disease. And one more related topic to that. That is orphan drugs. Okay. One other topic that is neglected tropical disease. First. Then second. Bone ossification test and juvenile justice act. Then third, a right to strike and a right to protest. Clear? Aapko right to strike? Koi doubt nahi hai? 
इफ दे आर गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय देन दे कैन नॉट सिट ऑन स्ट्राइक हमने देख दिया इफ दे आर प्राइवेट प्रैक्टिशनर देन दे कैन सिट ऑन द प्रोटेस्ट आफ्टर गिविंग जो भी उसमें लीगैलिटी है उसको फॉलो करके बैठ सकते हैं इस बीच में कॉन्सिलियेशन हो गया तो फिर नहीं बैठेंगे ऐसा ठीक है एंड द लास्ट टॉपिक इज मेविटल वेब एक्सेप्शन सो क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ड ऑन मेविटल वेब एक्सेप्शन इन दी मेन्स नॉट इन दिलिम्स बट अदर टॉपिक्स आर रिलेटेड टू पिलिम्स